people are donating groceries to help Chinese cities under COVID lockdowns. But corrupt Chinese officials are simply throwing it away. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. So, after about a month of an intense lockdown, the Chinese city of Xi'an is slowly opening up. Xi'an is a city of 12 million people, bigger than New York City and Chicago combined. And while Xi'an's speedy recovery seems impressive, well, that's only according to Chinese officials. If you dig in beyond the state-run news reports, you'll find a lot of things are not so impressive. Like, how officials have been supposedly keeping people safe. Methods like welding people into their homes. Which is not only horrible, but also horribly inefficient. How does a simple weld require 10 people? Also, why is no one wearing eye protection? Speaking of inefficient policies, mass COVID testing. I mean, sure, you want to test people for the virus, but do you also need to test hundreds of feet of barriers for the virus? And also individual garlic sprouts. This happened in Hunan province, which is in the middle of more than one COVID outbreak. After that video went viral on the Chinese internet, local government officials claimed they were doing it because people weren't buying garlic sprouts without proof the sprouts didn't have COVID. So the officials were just providing proof. Right. So that sounds kind of like a made-up explanation for a propaganda stunt that backfired when people started making fun of it. But let's say Hunan authorities were telling the truth, and people were really afraid of getting COVID from garlic sprouts. This is what happens when Chinese authorities keep telling people they can get COVID from Maine lobsters, or auto parts packaging, or Canadian mail all to cover up for failures in their zero-COVID policy. Of course, you can't test every inanimate object for COVID. That would be silly. That's why Chinese officials are disinfecting everything instead. Disinfecting everywhere. Even small armies marching to disinfect an unused field while video recording it. But what's the harm in a little extra cleanliness, right? Well, the harm is this. It's winter time, with temperatures well below freezing in Xi'an. And that disinfectant spray turned to ice. And icy streets caused deadly car accidents. Is that why top disease experts keep saying China got it right on COVID-19 strategy? Or maybe it's because strict Chinese lockdowns left people starving in their homes. And food prices skyrocketed, even if you could get food. On Chinese social media platform Weibo, people posted the prices of the vegetables they managed to purchase, whether it be from online or from certain contacts. One person wrote, I spent 111 RMB on these groceries. To get them, my parents had to go through a lot of connections. Local governments claimed they were listening to the concerns of the people. But instead of actually delivering food, they made videos of workers delivering food with maximum inefficiency. I wish I could say that's the only video of the notorious food delivery chain, but no, there are so many more. Here's one of people passing around groceries while singing the classic hit, Without the Communist Party, there would be no new China. The Communist Party loves to remind people that they are the one and only caretaker of the people. They literally feed people their lines on video for this purpose. <laughs> There's also this video that circulated online when Xi'an announced it would be opening up. <laughs> Well, obviously the Communist Party is great. All great leaders force people to get on their knees and thank them. 
But strangely, not everyone agrees. Last week, videos posted online show angry crowds of people protesting the lockdown. All of the jeering you hear is basically about how people didn't get enough food. But it's not like there wasn't enough food. It's that there was, and it was wasted. This video shows huge amounts of good food and groceries tossed in trash bins. The groceries that you see in the video were all donations from other parts of China, sent to support the people of Xi'an. So local officials in Xi'an appear to have gotten their hands on boatloads of food donated from other parts of China, and they just wasted it while people were starving in their homes. Do you still think China got it right on their COVID-19 strategy? And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on Patreon or Locals. SR Haddon asks, why did the U.S. intervene to save Korea from China, but not Tibet? Seems like Western interests would be more concerned about domino theory having aggressive communist China on the doorstep of billion population India rather than a backwater peninsula, which Korea was back then. Good question. It's mainly because in 1950, when communist China invaded Tibet, Tibet's situation was complicated. Since the fall of the Qing Dynasty in 1912, Tibet was ruled as an independent country. But even though the Dalai Lama had declared Tibet was independent, and was ruling Tibet independently, Tibet couldn't come to a formal agreement with the new Republic of China. Essentially, China never gave up its claim over Tibet. Even before the Communist Party took over China in 1949, no Western countries formally acknowledged Tibet as an independent country. That included the U.S., which told the Republic of China in 1942 that they never disputed Chinese rule over Tibet. The U.S. also didn't have a lot of power in that region at the time. Arguably, if any Western powers should have gotten involved, it was the U.K. They had been supporting and advising the Tibetan army. But they had just left India, so it was probably not the best time to send British troops into the region. That's a big contrast with the Korean War. The U.S. saw defending South Korea as a meaningful way to stop the global expansion of communism. And strategically, it allowed the U.S. to keep a permanent military presence right on the doorstep of communist China and the Soviet Union. Thanks for your question and your support, S.R. Hayden. And thank you to everyone else who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. If you haven't joined yet, check it out. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored and support us with as little as a dollar per episode. And you'll get cool perks, like me being able to answer your question on the show. Link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.